Every day, a young fisherman named Syracuse sets out to fish off the coast of Ireland. One day, he finds a young woman in his nets. He helps her, and when she regains consciousness, he is relieved to see that she seems unharmed. However, she behaves quite strangely and refuses to go to the hospital. She also can't remember her name, which Syracuse attributes to amnesia. He takes her to his late mother's house, offers her some sandwiches, and suggests she stay there for a while. He needs to go see his daughter. Annie lives with his ex-wife, Mara, and today he has to take the girl to dialysis. While the procedure is ongoing, he tells Annie a story about a fisherman who caught a woman from the sea. Annie explains that it was likely a selkie, a creature she learned about at school. Sometimes they come ashore until the sea calls them back. After the procedure, Syracuse takes Annie back to her mother, who is eager to show her the new electric wheelchair she received. Annie shows off the chair to her father, but her mother immediately criticizes him for not talking to the doctor about a new kidney for their daughter. The next morning, Syracuse finds a woman washing clothes in a stream, singing in an unknown language. She asks if she can come with him, and he lets her board his boat. On the way, she says her name is Ondine, which means from the water. Soon, Syracuse's boat stops for lobster fishing, but the baskets come up empty. Ondine begins to sing a song that Syracuse has never heard before, and suddenly every basket is filled with a catch. She helps him pull them out and is surprised when he throws the smaller ones and extras back into the sea. However, she flatly refuses to go with him to the market. He sells the lobsters to the astonished buyers and purchases a dress at a store. Then he heads to pick up Annie from school. On the way home, he continues the story about the fisherman and the woman from the sea. She sings to the fish and he catches them. Both are happy. Annie thinks it's a dream because everything seems like his dream coming true. Moreover, no one knows the language she sings in. After dropping his daughter off at home, Syracuse heads back, not noticing that the curious girl is following him. He gives Ondine some clothes and food when he reaches the house and finds her talking to his father, who asks how long she'll be staying in his house. Hearing that it's up to him, Syracuse decides she'll stay forever to live with him happily ever after, like in the fairy tale he's been making up with Annie. After seeing everything with her own eyes, Annie goes to the library and asks for books about Selkies. Meanwhile, Syracuse goes to church to confess, admitting he's an alcoholic, even though he hasn't drunk for over two years. Lately, he's been haunted by a dream where he attends the funeral of his ex-wife's new husband, Alex, after which he reunites with Mora, who still struggles with alcohol problems. The priest advises him to see a psychologist, but Syracuse reminds him of the secrecy of confession and tells him that he pulled a woman out of the water with his net. Now he's hiding her from everyone else. The priest asks him to come to Mass as there's no other way he can help him. Meanwhile, Annie is studying legends about Selkies. Undine cleans the cottage and then examines the new things Syracuse brought her. She's particularly intrigued by the fishnet stockings, which she stretches over one hand, making them look webbed. The next day, Annie goes to her grandmother's cottage and sees Ondine swimming. The girl boldly approaches the shore and declares that she knew all along. The story about the fisherman and the selkie isn't a fairy tale. Annie tells her about her illness and asks her to heal her, but Ondine doesn't know magic and says so. The girl asks a lot of questions, and Ondine likes the lively and straightforward child. Annie asks her to always tell the truth, because what's the point of friendship otherwise? She's very curious about what it's like underwater. Is it better or worse than here? Undine says it varies, but singing is easier there. Annie shares everything she's learned about Selkies from the books. They can stay on land for up to seven years until they find happiness with a human. Then she abruptly shifts the conversation to her grandmother because her father still misses her very much. Remembering her mother, Annie prepares to go home and Undine asks her to come back again. Syracuse also goes to the library to borrow books about Selkies only to find out that Annie has already taken them. Meanwhile, Annie meets up with the neighborhood kids who show off their bikes, and she lets one of the girls play with her wheelchair before it runs out of power and rolls into the water. The kids abandon Annie, and she has to make her way home where she's met by Alex. He recharges her battery and tells her that Selkies were invented in his homeland of Scotland, but the girl insists that Ondine speaks a different language. Meanwhile, Syracuse finds Ondine on a pontoon in the middle of the bay and offers to take her back to his boat. He asks her to hold the tiller, but when a patrol boat speeds by, Undine hides and steers the boat with her foot. Syracuse teases her, noting that she manages just fine with her feet. She starts singing again as he pulls up his net and discovers it's filled with a bountiful catch of salmon, which his nets usually can't catch. Before he can fully enjoy his luck, Syracuse sees the patrol boat returning. The wildlife officers find the salmon and demand to see the nets he used to catch them. He shows them the usual nets for catching salmon, but they're completely dry, meaning he's telling the truth. However, the men notice Ondine hiding in the hold. 
She confirms that Syracuse caught the salmon in an ordinary net, and they leave the boat. Relieved that the officers believed their story and that nothing happened when Ondine was seen by people, they head to the harbor together to sell the catch. Syracuse offers to buy her a gift, and she asks for another dress, which she'll choose herself. On the way to the store, they run into Annie, who's thrilled that their story isn't just a fairy tale. The girl helps Ondine pick out an outfit while the townspeople gawk at the pretty stranger through the shop window. Later, Annie arrives at her grandmother's house, which looks festive and cozy thanks to Ondine's efforts. Ondine offers to teach the girl how to swim, and she agrees since she'll have someone from the sea by her side. They both play in the shallow water when Ondine suddenly sees something in the water and asks Annie to get on the raft. She pulls out a bundle, which Annie calls Selkie clothing. According to legend, if she buries it in the ground, she'll be able to stay on land for seven years, provided her sea husband doesn't come for her. After listening to Annie, Undine buries the find in the greenhouse, and Annie counts the steps to remember the exact spot. Later, she tells her father about it and advises him to watch out for strangers. Meanwhile, they all head to the local festival by boat, and Undine denies Annie's claim that she can grant wishes because she's not really a selkie. Upset, Annie pretends that her wheelchair brakes have failed and falls off the pier, hoping to test the truth of her words. Undine jumps in to save her and pulls the girl to the surface. Syracuse carries Annie home and hands her over to Moore and Alex. Later, Ondine tells Syracuse that the wheelchair's brakes worked just fine and that Annie was testing her ability to breathe underwater. He confesses that he used to drink heavily, but one day he returned from a trip to find Annie's mother sleeping next to their unconscious child. They saved the girl, and he decided that one of them had to stay sober at all times. Meanwhile, Mora tells Annie that a dark-haired stranger has been looking for the fisherman's girlfriend, which causes the girl to have a nightmare. Meanwhile, Syracuse and Ondine become intimate. Later, he goes to confession and admits to the priest that he sinned with Ondine the night before, and now he fears the luck she brings because he's long lost hope for the best. He knows that something wonderful or terrible will happen, and he's afraid of both. After the conversation, the fisherman steps outside and is approached by an unknown man who starts asking questions about Ondine. Syracuse ignores him and walks away. That day, he takes Annie to dialysis as usual, but when they return home, no one is there. Mora and Alex have been out drinking at the nearby pub. Syracuse takes the girl there. Finally reaching home, he finds the doors broken in and Ondine nowhere to be found. Syracuse searches the shore and eventually finds her hiding. She reminds him of the Selkie's husband and says he's here to take her away. Meanwhile, the intoxicated Mora is riding her daughter's wheelchair and, despite Alex's warnings, is determined to make it home on it. Syracuse hides on Dean in a secret cave behind the waterfall, offering to grant her a wish, but her only wish is for Annie to get well, so he wishes for her to be able to stay. Meanwhile, the man searching for Ondine is driving around town and gets into a car accident, colliding with a car driven by the intoxicated Mora. Alex is thrown through the windshield. Annie, however, manages to buckle up, but still sustains injuries. Syracuse and Ondine, driving by, recognize the car. Syracuse screams and rushes at the medics as they load Annie onto a stretcher to take her to the hospital. Later, they find the girl in the hospital and learn that she's undergoing an immediate kidney transplant from Alex, who, by a stroke of luck, was a compatible match. Meanwhile, the unknown man meets Ondine in the hallway. He wonders why she speaks their language because neither of them belongs here. The sea spat her out, but this is not their world. The woman asks him to return home without her. The next morning, Annie wakes up and immediately asks where Ondine is. Syracuse reassures her that they'll see her soon. Sometime later, a cremation ceremony for Alex takes place. Mora scatters his ashes over the sea, regretting that this time she can't blame her ex-husband for everything. She asks him to take Annie, but demands that he get rid of Ondine, and she forces her husband to drink to Alex's soul. In a drunken state, Syracuse goes to the boat where Ondine is hiding and calling her a selkie, takes her out to sea where he demands that she return to her husband and sing her songs to him. He takes her to the foot of the lighthouse and continues to insist that she needs to leave. He leaves her there and prepares to sail away, believing that life isn't a fairy tale. People and selkies can't be together. Ondine asks for a chance to say goodbye to Annie, but he sails away. As dusk falls, the log she's sitting on gives her silhouette the appearance of a woman with a tail. Waiting for nightfall, she jumps into the sea. In the morning, the priest wakes up a depressed Syracuse, who realizes he's made a big mistake. He brings Annie from the hospital to his home. The girl comforts him, saying that Undine will come back because she left something here. 
Later, Annie watches TV, where the Icelandic band Sigur Rós is performing, and suddenly Syracuse recognizes the words. He realizes that Ondine was an ordinary woman and rushes to the lighthouse. At first, he can't find her anywhere and runs along the shore, shouting, but soon he sees a fire where Ondine is warming herself. At first, she says she's a sea creature who found her magical clothes and buried them so she could stay forever with the family she loves. But Syracuse demands the truth, and then Ondine admits that she was a courier delivering illegal substances from Romania. She was in a boat with a backpack full of substances when the police closed in. Her guard threw her into the water because he couldn't swim. She swam until she couldn't anymore, and then she drowned. But she got caught in Syracuse's net. The girl tells him her real name, Iowana. The fisherman takes her home where criminals are already waiting, having taken Annie hostage. Syracuse tries to fight them off, but he can't handle two armed men. The girl told them the story about the Selkie's clothing buried in the greenhouse, and the men demand to be shown the spot. Everyone heads to the greenhouse to dig up the goods, but they find nothing because Annie has hidden the Selkie's clothing elsewhere. Undine promises to stay with Annie, and she admits that she hid the package in the lobster crate. Everyone heads to the boat, but when the criminals lift the basket, Annie reminds Undine that she's a Selkie, and they are not. Undine throws one of the villains overboard. He drowns while Syracuse throws the other Romanian into the water, disarming him. The arriving police arrest the criminal along with Ondine, who faces deportation unless she gains citizenship, or she could get married. Later, Annie goes to confession and says that her father is getting married soon, even though she wasn't a real Selkie. But you can't marry a seal, can you? In the final scenes, a girl in a white dress and a fisherman in a suit sail off on their boat for a honeymoon, bringing to life the fairy tale about the happiness of a human in a Selkie. That's where the movie ends.